Hey everyone, welcome back to Why Aren't You? I'm Jack, an American citizen who sometimes prefers Canadian sitcoms over American ones. There's something in the water that just makes Canadian television feel more... genuine? I think that's the best way to describe it. Maybe it's the cliché of Americans being more self-obsessed and cynical, making the comedy at the expense of other people, but in a mean way. I feel like this is something you can see in shows like The Office, with how they treat characters like Kevin or Creed. Like, yes, they're weird characters, but I feel like the rest of the cast just makes fun of these characters with a bit of hate or malice. A Canadian show, like Trailer Park Boys, Schitt's Creek, or today's show, Lighter Kenny, might bring these characters in on the joke. Obviously, this is an uneducated guess, as I haven't done any heavy research into psychology based on geographical location. I'm just rambling with my own opinion, so I have an opening to the episode where I talk about the comedy of Letterkenny, and why I think it's one of the funniest and smartest shows available on Hulu right now. Letterkenny is a sitcom that takes place in the titular small town, and revolves around the daily lives of the townsfolk and their different cliques. These usually range from problems on the local farm, to a rivalry between two hockey teams, to general distaste between some of the characters. Letterkenny started as a YouTube web series in 2013. The show was then called Letterkenny Problems and started with creator Jared Kiso playing a character and speaking to the camera about random problems that would happen in his hometown. The show was loosely based on Kiso's real life hometown, located somewhere in Ontario. Kiso was approached by Crave TV, a Canadian streaming service, to produce six episodes of a more traditional series. Kiso stars as Wayne, a stern and serious farmer working on the farm left to him by his parents. The main cast includes fellow farmers Daryl, the snarky dairy farmer and childhood friend of Wayne, Squirrely Dan, the storytelling farmer that is a bit more openly progressive in politics and sexuality, and Katie, Wayne's sister who loves drinking and cracking jokes with the boys. Crave had ordered four seasons between February 2016 and Christmas of 2017, including four holiday specials. I think one of the reasons that the show was so quote-unquote easy to make was because of the short six-episode seasons. Obviously, no television show is actually easy to make, but purely from a time aspect, shooting a six-episode season seems like a lot less work than making a 22-episode one. The first two seasons of Letterkenny were released on Hulu in the U.S. on July 13th, 2018. The show had quickly picked up a following in the U.S., enough so that Hulu added the subsequent seasons on December 27th of that year. In May of 2019, Hulu had earned the exclusive rights to stream Letterkenny in the United States. The only reason I learned about Letterkenny was because of its addition to Hulu, so I'm eternally grateful to them for adding it to their service. The town of Letterkenny hosts a number of cliques that cause problems with our farming friends. These cliques include things like the rave-loving drug addict goth crew, the dude bro hockey players, and other rough and tumble farmers from different parts of the town. These different crews also have their own standout characters with personality quirks that can only be found in a town of less than 5,000 people. Two of my favorite characters have been regulars since the beginning, Riley and Jonesy. These two hockey players are the most dude bro guys in town, and they only love babes, buds, and hockey. Kinda wish they played basketball so I could make a whole alliteration thing happening. In the beginning of the series, Jonesy and Riley are both, on paper, dating Katie as they spend all of their free time off of the ice with her. I don't know if this is, like, technically considered a polyamorous relationship, or if Riley and Jonesy are both acting as one boyfriend. Considering how close they are, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the latter. But looking at their lives away from Katie, they're so obsessed with each other. Like, I get that it's a small town, but you would think that they would try to find at least one friend that isn't either one of them. It's not from a lack of people either, like, there was an entire Letterkenny Irish hockey team before they went pro. Those were all kids Riley and Jonesy's age, I'm assuming. It's just something to think about while I pat out this script a little bit. Where this show really shines though is in its dialogue. This show has some of the quickest jokes in succession that I've ever seen in any form of media. Nice onesie. Does it come in men's? Oh, I think you come in men enough for all of us. I think you better come in my... I mean, you better come... I think you better come say that to his face, you fucking hicks. Nice execution. You're doing terrific. It's just so rapid paced that it's hard to catch all the jokes for the first time around. Which leads me to admitting my first cardinal sin. I've watched Letterkenny more than once. <laughs> 
Jack, I thought your whole thing was to find something new to watch and limit rewatching things. Normally, yeah, that's the case. I'm not gonna sit down and rewatch shows like Riverdale or The Office or Parks and Rec, as I think one watch through of those shows is enough to give you everything you need from it. However, I think with the speed and the density of the jokes and the little runoff gags, that the show warrants at least a few watch throughs. Plus, Letterkenny only has 54 episodes compared to The Office's 201, which is an infinitely easier number to binge watch. But getting back on topic, the jokes and the quips on the show are ridiculous. From the hockey team chirps to other hockey players. Fuck you, put a shirt on. Fuck you, Riley, go scoop it off your mom's bedroom floor for me. She gives my nipples butterfly kisses. The weird sexual innuendos of Gail the bartender. Gail, how are you now? Good, and you? Well, that's bad. I'm asking for 5K for 69% of my company. Why 69? Both sides, benefit. To Wayne and Katie going off on Daryl's intelligence. The editing and delivery of the dialogue barely gives you any space to breathe in the coolest way possible. Now let's get into it, the why aren't you section, where I try to think of some basic excuses to either avoid the show or reasons why you wouldn't have invested time into it already. The show doesn't sound like it's about anything. Is there no plot? The show doesn't technically have an overarching narrative, but I think that makes it perfect for being able to hop in and out at any time. All of the episodes are self-contained stories, and only a few things are carried over between episodes. Some of these things would include romantic relationships, new characters introduced, and things like that. I also think that gives the show its charm. It doesn't shoehorn itself into one specific type of show. This isn't exactly a reason why you might not be watching, but in doing research in the show's subreddit, I saw someone post that they refused to watch the show purely because of the annoying music used in the show's advertisement on Hulu. My argument here is that the music in the show is actually amazing, as it uses a wide range of Canadian independent artists of all different genres, ranging from skater punk to EDM and electronic music. I think there's even a French country song or two sprinkled in there. The soundtrack staff works hard to get a good representation of independent music, and they work hard with Kiso and the other writers to get the vibe of the music they write the scripts around. All nine seasons of Letterkenny are available to stream on Hulu. This one feels like it was a bit shorter than some of my other videos I've written in the past, and I don't know if that's because the show doesn't have a lot of content, or if I just like the show so much I feel like it's a no-brainer to watch. Either way, I think if you aren't watching Letterkenny right now after this video, uh, pitter-patter. Thank you all for watching this video. Um, I actually had to re-record this one as my hard drive with the previous take got corrupted in the move, so I also used this time to patch up the script a little bit from its initial version. You know the drill by now. Subscribe to the channel for the next video. Be sure to leave a like on this one. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to cover. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram, at JackCallahanIV, so follow me on there for more meme content and updates on script writing and things like that. Hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you on the next one.